have been interested in yoga for many, many years. And in the tradition of Krishnamacharya for quite a lot of that time. And in this tradition, I really love the way that all the tools of yoga are used and that all the different models that are used in yoga come together so well. They make sense. They make sense with each other and they make sense too with a lot of what we know from modern science as well. So having studied and been a yoga teacher in this tradition and also trained teachers in this tradition. No, yes, I had. I had begun to train teachers in this tradition then. Um, I really wanted to study more deeply with yoga therapy when this became possible. It's difficult to say what is unique about this training program because I haven't done any other yoga therapy training programs. But I love the clarity of it. I liked the way that we looked at so many different models and we studied, I think, in great depth. Not not just asana, yoga, yoga really is not asana, as so many people think it is nowadays. For us, we saw that asana was, was just quite a small part when you think of the greatness of pranayama, of meditation, and of all the different ways that there are to help people to go into the meditative state. All the different ways there are for healing things not just even to do with practice, but with lifestyle as well. So these things are very, very good about the course. So if we think, of, so if we think about the tools of yoga, I suppose we can go from gross to subtle. So when it comes to practicing, as obviously using the body. And for yoga chikitsa, for yoga therapy, we saw so much how very, very simple movements can be used to great effect. Um, you don't have to just think in terms of classical asana. Obviously, they are there as well, if that's important. But very often for yoga therapy, much simpler movements will be very, very useful. So we saw how to use the body in many different ways. And then always there is the importance of the breath, of using the breath. And again, I think it was so clearly expressed and taught the different parts of the breath, for instance, and how very, very simple breathing can be so effective. How you can use the inhalation for one thing, the exhalation for another, and different ways of emphasizing the inhalation if you want, or the exhalation if you want. That pranayama is so much more than techniques of nostril control or whatever. On my course, we were very fortunate to be taught by Sir sometimes as well. And I will always remember the simplicity of his practices, very simple practices. And he might give them to people who had been practicing pranayama for years, but they were so effective. So that was using the body, using the breath, and then of course always the importance of the mind. And for using the mind, 
there are so many different possibilities. But one thinks particularly of bhavana, which is different focuses. The importance of finding the right focus for the right person. How one particular focus will never be right for everybody. So that takes you on to the importance of the yoga therapist becoming better at listening to the student, at picking up from the student small, subtle clues perhaps about what will work for them and what won't. <clears throat> Another really, really, really important tool. We use the voice all the time, but in, in many yoga classes nowadays, it is not used at all. But it is so, so powerful. Sound takes you to the heart immediately. And then, going beyond the tools, we learned the importance of the connection between the student and the therapist. And I'll always remember a diagram that was drawn on the board, you know, one person sitting on a chair, another person sitting on a chair facing each other, and then the link. And the link was between their hearts. <clears throat> and that was emphasized most of all. And again, I can remember Sir saying more than once, the techniques might be wrong, but if the relationship is right, then the, the yoga will work. We had a lot of help in getting better at observing. And I, for one, was very grateful for that because I think I found that really difficult to begin with. So there would be quite a lot of, there would be quite a lot of role play, um, which helped a lot and also um, notes, you know, the different kind of things to look for in the body, um, to look for in the voice, to look for in the breath. Yes, this was, this was well covered, um, how to observe. But in the end, I think it is something that you have to just practice and practice and practice. And then, of course, there's also learning to take the pulse, which comes also in observation. And again, I think that is something that I personally found quite difficult, very difficult. Um, so it was good to have quite a lot of practice with that as well, and to be encouraged to practice doing that very regularly at the beginning and at the end of every one of my own yoga practices for instance oh the most enjoyable aspects i really enjoyed the training so much i loved training with lots of different people from different countries of the world I loved training with people from different generations. You know, so um, people from their 20s to their 70s were there. And because of that, it brought a tremendous richness, I think, to the course. Um, that, so that was being with the other people. I loved gaining more knowledge about yoga and gaining more experience of yoga. I loved beautiful practices that we were given. It was exciting feeling that I was going deeper into this subject that I love so much with other people who also loved it. I suppose for me there were 
one or two particular subjects, like taking the pulse, um, like anatomy and physiology. That's a very personal thing. It's always been difficult for me. I don't think there were... I suppose the most challenging aspects for me were um, in my own personal development, having, having a mentor who actually did challenge me and was able to make me see myself in new ways. So that was challenging, but challenging in a very good way and exciting. course benefited me personally amazingly. It, it brought together the, diff the different tools of yoga, different models of yoga, different aspects of yoga into a much more fluid coherence in my mind. It, it helped me to understand myself a little better. It's still a long, that's, that's a slow process. Um, but it did, but it helped. Professionally, it, I think, made me much better at being able to help other people. Um, so when I see people one-to-one -one now, I, I feel more confident in being able to use yoga to help them. When I am teaching a group, I feel more confident also in being able to put over ideas that I feel are relevant. Um, and again, in using the tools that are, that are most appropriate for them at that time. I would recommend this course to others who are interested in yoga therapy because I think it takes people as deep as they want to go. It's, it's not superficial. It's not weighted towards the body. It sees the person as a whole. Um, it looks at it looks at each person as body, breath and energy, mind, personality, emotions, and the need also to have a spiritual connection with their own self. So that's another thing that I really like about this tradition, which I haven't mentioned so far. The importance it sees for each individual to have that connection with its own self. And the ability to help people to do that. And whether people believe in God or absolutely do not believe in God or aren't, even, aren't sure, it has a way of explaining that spirituality and of bringing it in to very simple practices that can help make that link for people. <laughs>